Hey teachers! So throughout the past couple of weeks, I have been sharing videos with you all about how to use one of my favorite tools for creating interactive presentations for students, and that is Genially. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create some really fun new interactive components in your presentation, such as dragging and dropping and allowing your students to draw on the slides. Now, as I already mentioned, this video is part of a series all about Genially, and if you have not already, I especially encourage you to go back and watch the very first video in this series, which is all about the basics of Genially, how to use all of the different components to create really fun presentations for your students. And the reason I recommend that you watch that video first is because we're going to be integrating some of those different components that I talked about in this video here today. But in that video, I showed you how to make an interactive presentation. And today we're going to take that a step further and I'm going to show you all kinds of ways to make those presentations even more interactive so that your students love them. So let's go ahead and jump on my laptop and get started right now. All right, so we are back inside of Genially. And if you have watched any of the other videos in this Genially uh, presentation or series, you've seen me working on this ancient Egypt presentation. And today we are going to enhance this presentation and make it even better by adding drawing components and drag and drop components to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just scroll down to a new section. A lot of times if you've watched any of these other videos, what I will do is I'll just duplicate a slide, drag it to where I want it, and then just delete out the things that I'm not going to use. So I'm just gonna delete out this stuff and go ahead and add in what I want. And on this slide, I am going to have a key with hieroglyphics and then I'm going to use the drawing feature so that students can write their name in hieroglyphics. So first of all, I'm going to click on image because I'm going to add that hieroglyphic key which I've already saved on my computer. So if I click on this box, I can upload images from my computer. There we go. So this is the key students will use. And then I do wanna just give them a little bit of information so that they know what they're looking at. I'm going to change this. And then I'm going to say, use the key to write your name in hieroglyphic in the space below. And now to create a space where students actually write their name, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to resources and I'm just going to add a simple box here that students can write in. So I'll just click on under shapes, the square, and I'll make it bigger. And then I wanna make it white. Okay, so this will be the slide that students will interact with and they will actually write their name in hieroglyphics. Now the only thing is, is the drawing feature is not automatically turned on as soon as you start creating in Genially. You have to turn the drawing feature on yourself if that is something that you want students to be able to use. So to turn the drawing feature on, you're gonna go to the top right hand corner and you'll see this cog, this is the settings. So you're gonna click on this and then where it says paint on Genially, you wanna make sure that this is turned on. So that's all you're going to do and then you'll exit out of that. So now the drawing feature is actually turned on and students can actually complete this activity. Now anytime we want to preview a slide and test it, we just hit the eye icon up here. So let's go ahead and test it out. This is what the students will see. Use the key to write your name in hieroglyphics in the space below. And then for students to write, they will see this pen icon in the upper corner. So they'll click on this and they actually have options here. They can change the color if they want. They can make it bigger or smaller or thicker or smaller. And then they can actually start drawing. And I am definitely not an artist, but then they can actually start drawing in that space. 
So this is something really fun that students, that when we've tested these, students have responded really well to this. Another way that you can use the drawing tool that works really well is for matching activities. So you can have a student draw a line from one thing to another. Um, that's a really great thing um, that we do as well. Okay, so that is how you use the drawing tool, super easy. Now I want to create another slide that has a drag and drop activity. So let's go back to pages and like I do all the time, I'm just going to duplicate this and then get rid of the things that I don't need. So for this, what I'm going to have students do, this presentation is about ancient Egypt, but my students have also been learning about ancient China. So I am going to create an activity where they um, compare things that they've learned about ancient Egypt to ancient China. So drag and drop the terms to the correct category. I'm going to go ahead and center this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have two boxes, one for Egypt and one for China, where students can drag and drop the words. So there's one box. And then to copy it, I'm just going to click Control C and then Control V to paste it. And I'll put that one here. And then we'll just use this. We need to pull it out to the front. This is the ordering tool where you can change the order that elements are in. So we want to move it to the front and I will change this to ancient Egypt and then let's see if we can copy it. Control C, Control V to copy. I'll pull it over here and then I'm just going to change this to China. Now I'm also going to click Control V and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put six different terms down here and then students can drag and drop those terms to the correct category. So I'm just going to paste that same thing to keep the text the same uh, five more times. And then I can change the words and everything down here. Okay, now just like with the drawing feature, if you wanna use the drag and drop feature, you have to actually turn that feature on. And so we're gonna turn it on the same way that we turned on the drawing feature. We're gonna to go to this cog icon up here, which represents the settings. And next to drag elements, we wanna make sure that that is turned on. Now, the only problem is when you turn that on, it automatically makes every single thing in your presentation draggable, which you don't want students dragging every part of your presentation. So any part of your presentation that you do not want to be draggable, you have to lock it down. So let's go back to the beginning of the presentation and we'll lock down everything except for the words down here because we want those to be draggable, but everything else in the presentation, we do not wanna be draggable, so we're gonna lock those things down. Now, to lock everything down, just click and hold and highlight everything on a slide. That will highlight everything, and then you're gonna click the lock icon at the top of the page, and you will see that everything is locked. Now, one thing to keep in mind about this is once something is locked, not only is it locked in student view, but it's also locked for editing. So if I need it to revise this text where it says Egypt, you see that when I click on the text box, it's locked. I can't edit it. So if I do need to edit it, I'm gonna have to click on it, and then I'm gonna have to click the lock icon again to unlock it, edit it, and then lock it again. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. All right, let's go through and lock everything else in this presentation. Okay, now this is the slide that is going to have draggable elements on it. So we wanna make sure we do not lock the things that are draggable. So I'm only going to lock the top half of this slide. Notice I have not locked anything down here. Now I'm gonna go through and lock the rest of the presentation. Okay, so everything is locked and let's go ahead and preview this. I'm gonna start on this slide here just so that I can show you how everything is locked. If I preview this, 
Notice how on this slide, the students can't click and drag anything. They can still use the drawing tool. Um, the, the only thing that's changed is they can't drag anything. Now when we go to this next slide, you can see we locked the top half. They can't drag any of the text or the box up here. But because we did not lock the bottom, we can drag and drop each of these words to the correct category. So that is how you create drawing elements and drag and drop elements in your Genially presentations. And I highly recommend that you use these because students love them. So I would love to hear from you. Are you using Genially with your students? And if so, what types of presentations are you creating? And what type of interactive components are you integrating into those presentations? And what do your students really enjoy about it? Go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know. And your comments are so helpful too because when other teachers see how you're using something or the types of interactive components that you're using, it inspires them when they're creating inside of Genially too. So don't be shy with sharing in the comments. And then when you're done, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos all the time with all kinds of tips and tricks for using technology in the classroom and online learning. And I don't want you to miss out on any of those. So until next time, happy teaching.